In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own privately hosted encrypted replacement for Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive, and even point to how to replace Google Docs using this same methodology, all from one dashboard. And if you watch to the end of the video, I'll even show you how you can do so for free. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you're notified when new videos come out. Really appreciate the support. You might be wondering, Seth, why would you even want to do all this stuff on your own and self-hosted? Isn't that kind of tricky? Isn't it really difficult? Do I have to be very tech savvy to be able to do this? Well, there are a couple of reasons you might want to do this. And uh, to answer that last question first, no, you don't have to be tech savvy to make this work. This is a beginner's guide. Anyone can do this. I promise you anyone can do this. If you know how to buy any kind of services online and keep a username and password, then you can make this work for you. And you don't have to be dependent on Google for everything. That's part of the reason that I'm interested in doing this is just to wean myself from the dependence on Google services. Gmail is great. It, it's really convenient. However, I know that I'm the product when I use it. They take every one of my emails, they scan them for useful information, and they sell that to advertisers. Uh, frankly, all of the other big players do too. Apple with iCloud. They are interested in obtaining your information and sifting through it for their purposes, occasionally for selling to advertisers. That's not a popular topic of conversation. It's true of all big tech. They want your data. So if something is free, you're paying in privacy. I'm trying to reclaim my privacy. So this does have some cost associated. Now you've been warned. All right. So I'm going to get out of the way here and just jump off into the corner uh, over here in the top, top right hand corner. I'm already logged into my Volter account and it shows that I've got some servers already running. Let me even get that out of the way so I can show you how I use Volter.com. Now Volter.com, if you're not familiar, familiar with it, is a virtual private server service, rather virtual private server as a service. So you can pay them a small fee per month to use their cloud servers that are really well supported. They have giant data centers in some cases with redundancy, if you, if that's what you choose, with image backups and taking care of all that hardware so you don't have to try to run a server from your home and have the risk of it breaking down. Very good option. Very similar to services like DigitalOcean or Linode, stuff like that, and not quite as overwhelming as all the options that you get with AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. So still very powerful though. I'm using Volter for this tutorial. I just find it to be very, very simple to use. Plus, they accept Bitcoin for payments. So if at some point in the future you want to use your Bitcoin to pay for a server, you can. So let's jump back into a full screen here so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. I'm on the products page right now. This is what I already have running and I've already, I've, I've blurred out the useful info there, but I have something already running. That's what I'm using right now. We're going to do this from scratch and from Volter, I just click deploy new server, cloud compute, and I'm in America. So I'm just going to look at all of the servers that are here in America. That'll decrease the amount of lag that I experience when I'm using these services. And I'm going to choose a server farm that's not too far from me. One that would be fairly close to me would be one in, say, Dallas. I'm pretty close to the central time zone. So scroll down. And instead of launching a server with a full 64-bit OS or a 32-bit OS or whatever else, I'm just going to launch an application. And what this will do is it'll launch an application pre-installed on one of those operating systems for me. So I don't have to do any more configuration. It's really simple. And the service I'm going to use is NextCloud. NextCloud, believe it or not, has all these services is built in. Now, you remember how I mentioned that I could replace Google Docs, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to replace all of the Google Docs functionality with uh, any of these services below the $20 a month mark. There have to be two CPUs. So it's got to be a pretty fast server for me to replace Google Docs with NextCloud. And I'm not going to do that in today's tutorial. Uh, just know that if you wanted to spend $20 a month on this server and maybe set up a Google Docs replacement that's fully encrypted for all of your friends and family, uh, just people who you know personally, you could. I'm going to go with the $5 a month service, which believe it or not, is more than strong enough for me to replace everything else that I use from Google. So we'll start there. Five bucks a month is actually good enough for everything else, including email and having it be fully encrypted uh, at rest. So I can give it a name. Um, gosh, we'll, we'll just say next cloud tutorial. And that's its name. Click on deploy now and Volter is going to do its thing and set up that brand new virtual private server for me. But it's going to take just a minute here. So I'll go ahead and give you uh, an ellipsis. We'll show the elapsed time. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay. Definitely less time than me trying to manually configure a server in person by assembling it from parts, right? Ordering everything from Newegg and building it from scratch. That was much easier. So now we're going to jump into the dashboard for the server itself. This is step one. 
one. I just have to see that my server is running and figure out how to access it. Here it shows me the location, the IP address, which I, I won't leave here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue to use this server afterwards. Even if I did, my password is hidden. I can copy it without revealing it here. And uh, my username by default is root. But I'm not gonna log into the server itself. I don't need to do any configuration there to get these services working for myself. It's pretty great that way. But I do need to work with the application. And I'll do that by scrolling down. It says application information, shows me the installation, and then the next cloud server details. This is the IP address of that next cloud server. Here's the username. I'm going to copy that now. And there's the password for that new username. When I first navigate to it, it's going to show me this error. Uh, SSL is not totally set up yet. So here we go. Let's, let's take a look to see what the exact issue is here. Invalid certificate plus, uh, wow, six cookies in use. Let's see what they got here. All right. I very likely need that just to be able to work with the admin. All right. So, but I just set up the server myself. So I feel like I can, it's totally safe for me to trust it for now. Grab that password, use that and go ahead and log in. Now I'm not going to save this password just because I don't need it. I'm not going to use this after the tutorial, but you might want to. I'm using Bitwarden there to save those passwords. And uh, that comes in really handy for, for things like this when I'm just using randomly generated passwords and randomly generated usernames on randomly generated IP addresses. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about in the end why you don't really need to assign this to its own special domain. But the splash screen, I'm just going to say in advance, it's not quite functioning. I'm just going to jump past that. Ooh, I can set a status to all this other stuff. It looks an awful lot like some kind of a web service, right? Because it's it's already pre-installed. It's pretty much ready to go, pre-configured. If I go to the upper left-hand corner, that is the home button. Brings me that back to the main dashboard. Next to it, we'll let it let it load. Dashboard, files. So this is my storage. Photos, kind of just parses all my files for the photos. And then activity. Those are the only tabs that I have right now on the base configuration of Nextcloud. But I promised you more. I promised you that we would be able to uh, store not just files, but we would also be able to have an encrypted calendar and encrypted mail service. Um, and so we want to set that up first thing. Let me jump out of the way here again. And to do that, I've got to click on the username over here. And instead of status or settings, I want to jump all the way down to apps. From here, we're going to download to the server and install a bunch of useful applications. And first, I'm going to go to app bundles. Again, this takes just a little bit of time, not too long, but enterprise bundle. All right. Auditing, logging, file access, control, retention, terms of service, etc. I can do all that stuff. The hub bundle is interesting, but what I need right now to replace calendar and mail and something like Trello is going to be this one, the groupware bundle. So I'm going to enable all of those. They're all going to be downloaded and enabled in one button press, but that does not create encryption for me just yet. Now I'm going to go over to featured apps while those are installing and I'm going to look for encryption. All right. So the default encryption module, it's, it has already been downloaded, but it hasn't been enabled yet. Plus end to end encryption for certain applications, not enabled or installed yet. I want to download and install that. And I want to enable the default encryption module so that all of my data on the server is encrypted at rest. Why is that so important to me? Well, I don't want any third parties to be able to guess my identity, even though I've left it, you know, pseudonymous, just a basic IP address to be able to log into this service with randomly generated username and password. I don't want anyone to be able to guess my identity or look through my files because they see, uh, because they use some kind of a, uh, an automated system to crawl the uh, this IP address and say, oh, look, it's a next cloud installation and I'm going to look at the contents. I want to ensure that everything is encrypted at rest and encrypted end to end for services where that applies. So I just did that in a couple of button presses. All right, that is pretty much, pretty much done. Now, when I, when I go to the navigation ribbon up top, I've got the dashboard, files, photos, activity as before, but now I've got mail, contacts, calendar, and deck. Now, what is deck? I'm going to start from, from the end and then work my way over. Deck is kind of like a Trello replacement. So if you're familiar with the productivity system Kanban or Kanban, uh, K-A-N-B-A-N, it's a system where with just three columns that allows you to go from to do, doing, and done. And it's one of the most simple ways of structuring tasks and projects. So project management has withstood the test of time. Systems like Scrum basically are glorified Kanban systems. Essentially, um, there's more to it than that, of course. You get what I'm saying. Kanban itself is the main event, and it's how you track a lot of productivity. Most professionals do. So upcoming, um, I can work on different boards, etc. And there is an Android application that I can point at at this server with these credentials. So that's done. Um, that's available. The, the best client for that that I've seen so far, I'll just go ahead and show you, is uh, the deck client right now that I have uh, available from F-Droid. So I'll leave a link to that as well down in the F-Droid repository down in the description below so you can download it to your Android devices, preferably de-Googled Android devices, <laughs> Freedom Phone, and you can get working with deck right away. But it's really pretty, uh, really pretty simple. All right, so oh, I've got a little message here it says, please enable server-side encryption in the admin settings in order to use the encryption.
encryption module. Hey, perfect. It's even warning me that I'm not quite encrypted for my Kanban board. So I've got to go to my admin settings and then look for server side encryption. So click the drop down, click on settings, and let's uh, let's check that out before I go any farther. What I don't want to do is accidentally move forward without encryption enabled. Even one slip up, right? If I add one record that is identifying, personally identifying, or uh, you know, at worst, incriminating in some way, and it's not encrypted, then I've got a problem on my hands. So uh, I'm not going to change any of this user info. I think the username is just fine. I could if I wanted to for, for easier login credentials, but why? If I've got a password manager and I just label that correctly in my password manager, then no public person can can figure out my identity, even by uh, brute forcing attacks, you know, logins on every Nextcloud service that they ever come across. So again, I'm, without making this too weird, I'm, I'm just saying that security is one part pseudonymity, right? As far as, as far as keeping this very, very safe. The encryption is just one other facet to it. So, all right, yeah, adding a, adding a website or a Twitter handle, I, I just don't need to add any of that personally identifying info here. It's just not necessary. All right, so on the left side, I want to go to privacy, uh, or I'm sorry, security at the top. So security right up here, just below personal info. All right, so the encryption app is enabled, but your keys are not initialized. Please log out and log in again. <laughs> maybe maybe I should have saved those credentials. Wah. All right, so first thing, gonna log out and then I'll log back in to the dashboard. For my part, I'm gonna need to just, because I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry guys, I know, I failed you. I do not have a photographic memory, not for totally randomly generated usernames and passwords. But we'll go ahead and log back in, go back to the admin settings and it looks like that's already loaded up. I'm gonna check to see, nope, no drop down available just yet. Now for the purposes of a, of a graphical user interface, yes, a single core virtual private server is kind of, kind of anemic, we'll say. <coughs> but for serving all of this stuff in near real time as you need it, it's more than enough, especially if it's just for one person like you or a couple people, uh, you and your significant other or you and your household or just you and a small office of people, five, say 10 people, maybe. Uh, you might want a more robust server for 10 people, but from one to five people, this is probably fine. All right, so it says important email, important upcoming events. So mail and calendar are already set up and it's already asking us to create what we need to there. I'm not gonna go too in depth there, Click on the user menu there, go down to settings. Now under administration, I'm gonna to go to the security tab. So I'm gonna enable server-side encryption. Yes, I want to enable. I'm just gonna use the default encryption module, which will be good enough, as well as encrypting the home storage. So all files stored on the main storage, otherwise only files on external storage will be encrypted, uh, but no, nah. all files, I want them to be fully encrypted. Password policy, I'm gonna tell everyone who signs up, uh, for everyone who I allow to use my service here, it must be 12 characters minimum, do, do. upper lowercase, numeric characters, special characters, they have to use best practices. And uh, I'm also gonna check those against reused passwords that have been cracked or uh, that have been leaked. So that's all a little bit more secure. So I can help people that are gonna use this service that I've set up to be more secure by default. And I could go crazy and say like, hey, it's gotta be uh, it's gotta be at least 16 characters, but I, I think that 12 is enough for now. I'm not gonna leave it at eight for anyone who has to use this. Also, I can tell people that they have to use 2FA to log in. I don't know, I, I feel like that's kind of overkill for now. But uh, after going to the security security setting of the settings tab on under administration, I now have server side encryption with the default encryption module that I had already downloaded and, and double checked. I know that I have end to end encryption for services that can use it. That's been downloaded and enabled. So I've got a fully encrypted email, contact, uh, contact sync, calendar, and Trello board now. And what I love about this is that I am no longer giving, surrendering my contacts to Google. Go over to the contacts page, going from the uh, lower settings menu, I can import contacts from a local file such as downloading those in bulk from contacts.google.com. So I export all of my contacts from Google and then re-import them all here. So I have a cloud storage that allows me to work with contacts and having them synced across devices, but fully encrypted and out of the clutches of Google. All right, that's that's a big pain point. Mail, I still need to set up and you will too, but it will take you just a little bit of time. Make sure you go through all the modules. There we go. So <gasps> manual, oh yeah. But uh, one of the most important modules for me was setting up a calendar. The thing that I struggled with most when looking at how I would escape Google. Sure, if you want to get rid of Google Docs, you could always use Zoho Office. You could always just use documents offline, such as LibreOffice. I thought, you know, if I could replace that functionality online, that might be nice, but I don't know if it's the most important thing for me. Just, it might not be. I tend to edit documents when I'm sitting down at a computer, which means I'm okay with offline storage of those documents, putting them on a hard drive. I don't need them in the cloud. But when it comes to syncing photos or backing up photos from a phone, when it comes to having contacts that then get, uh, can be synced to a phone, and when 
when it comes to dealing with productivity, like task management and project management, I do need that to be mobile with me. Sure, occasionally sharing documents as well. But for the most part, for the most part, what I need to go with me mobile is sort of the equivalent of like a little black book or like sticky notes, right? It's not so much a long form document that I need on my phone. I'll use my laptop to be able to edit a, a nice document with a full keyboard and everything for me. Uh, so this calendar was a big deal for me because it was one of the big missing components. I was looking for some kind of an encrypted alternative to Google Calendar everywhere. And I only found it here in Nextcloud. So this is the web calendar here. If you use any kind of a web DAV, it's called supporting calendar on your phone, then you can sync to this calendar. You can even create sub calendars. You can give and receive calendar invites that then are attached to that calendar. And you can even tie that in to services such as uh, Zoom meetings if you wanted to, or any kind of like third party scheduling tool, you could attach it to this calendar. Uh, but of course, then your calendar events, if you don't want them to be public, they're not only private, they're also encrypted on your own server. Guys, that's the tutorial. What I want to share with you. Thanks so much for watching to the end. My gift to you uh, for having checked out this tutorial all the way to the end is a code down below for a hundred dollars on Vaulter. Now, if, uh, if that offer has ended on Vaulter, as it sometimes does, it can be a limited time offer. There should be a backup code for 50. And if that code ends, there should be a backup code for 25. Uh, quick math will tell you that that runs a server like the one that I just showed you how to set up for many months. So that's my gift to you. Thank you so much for watching to the end, guys. Thank you so much for being supportive. Uh, let me know what other kinds of tutorials like this you'd like to see in the near future. Tell me in the comments section, more privacy oriented, more cryptocurrency and, and holding your coins, DeFi oriented, mining oriented. Should we do a little bit of business intelligence and look at some data in a spreadsheet? Tell me in the comments, guys. Love your face. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you want to be notified of videos like this in the future, first off, click subscribe, press the bell icon. Additionally, you can sign up for the Mind Your Biz email newsletter. That'll give you exclusive access to certain freebies, notifications for deals within the cryptocurrency mining space, as well as some of our flash sales for merchandise, which you can buy with cryptocurrency. That's right. It's the only cryptocurrency merch that you can buy with cryptocurrency. We practice what we preach. As always, thank you so much for watching. You're the reason I make this meeting. Media. I love your face and I will see you in the next one.